Welcome to A Stitch in Time, Part 1, Security Measures of the Planes of Prophecy Crafting Timeline. First off, note that anything that is standing or walking within the zone is aggro. Anything that is hovering or flying is not aggro. This will help you as you are moving forward. There are epic mobs in here. Even the heroics can smish you. I am above level 100 adventuring, so they're orange con. Normally they will be red con. But even at orange con or better, they're still going to be more than you can kill. First off, you talk to Meldrath the Marvelous once you're in the zone. He will give you some more background information that goes along with Druzel Rose information. Some very good lore there. You will want to pay attention to it for yourself. I'm just rushing through because I've done this a zillion and one times already. Once you talk to Meldrath, you get a quest to harvest 10 each of three different items. They are ground spawns. They are trackable with track harvests. You get two from each node. You will want to watch and make sure that you don't run into any of the aggro that's in here. Thankfully, they are relatively nearsighted, so it isn't that hard to avoid the standing ones. It's the walking ones that you have to worry about later on. These items are used to make something called an EMD, which is basically a fancy stunner. You will need five of them for the final instance, you, your final room in the instance. You will be making ten of them with the single combine that you do. If you feel after this walkthrough that you cannot stun all of the mobs that you want to stun with the other five that you will have, then you will want to harvest extra at this point, ten more of each of these harvestables, so that you can make 20 of them instead. That is purely a decision up to you. I will be doing it on under 10 total. Unless I really mess something up because I've managed to do it under 10 more than once. Right now, I'm not bothering to track. I'm just using the Mark One eyeball. If I don't get close to what I need, I will then start tracking. They do respawn. There are more in the next area that I am headed to, but there's also pathing epics, so I like to get as much of it done in this area as I can. I just need two more wires, and I need to not run into that security guard while I'm doing it, and then six more power nodes. It's the power nodes that I want to get more of before I go further. The ones near Meldrath have not respawned. I may wander a little the other direction. As long as I am careful, nothing's going to come out and smack me. There's another power node. So this part is relatively straightforward. It's just harvesting while avoiding standing mobs. There's my, the rest of my wire. I will be able to get the other two power nodes that I need further on, so this will be all I get here. Actually, I can avoid him. Go over here, grab the power node. There we go, done. Now I will continue onwards. I am heading east, then north from the exit. Well, exit, entrance, that thing, the zone in. And once I get to this door, I will get through it. I don't have to be careful entering through this door, but further doors in, you will want to watch it when you walk in. There is one mob there. He does an asymmetrical path. He is annoying. Since I can do this in under 10 EMDs, I usually stun him as well because he gets in the way of that doorway more than he's out of the way. And he's slow. And that annoys me. So, usually I, I take an extra one and I zap him. The epic is on its way away from the door, so I am going to just 
hop to the side near the garbage heaps. He will be turning right, so he will be out of my way. There is another mob ahead that's standing there. You do not want to run into it, but also you do not want to run too fast around this corner and run into that epic who is on his way here. He will turn around in a moment and then I can dip around him by using the junk heaps so I don't have to just slowly follow him. There he goes. I run over here. I run over the garbage heap. He's still out of the way. I am headed for the door. We are good. Mob to the left, mob to the right, both of them standing mobs. So walk straight. There you go. There you go. See them. Ignore them. Just go straight and you're fine. Hang a left. Boom, you're at the crafting equipment. I will be back as soon as I finish crafting. I neglected to tell you about the ingredients for the EMD combine. In addition to the 10 each of those three harvestables, you also need 10 storm stock and 25 celestial coal. That again makes 10 of the EMDs. If you're going to need more than that, you will want to um, make more at this point. Now you are going to head back out of this room. Remember the mobs to either side. Remember the epics through the door. Peekaboo! He's coming back. I'm being brave. I'm going to cut across in front of him. There we go. He can finish his pathing. I will finish my pathing. Everybody's happy. I have my EMDs on my hotbar. I have dodged past that epic. He will go past, no problem. Away we go. Now you're coming to new area again. And yes, this guy is going to be annoying. It's always a fun little dance placing this down outside of his aggro range and making sure that it hits him. I may have cut it just wrong. We'll see in a moment. I now have the message that it's active. It has drained my mana. He is going to path right into it. Just along the edge, zap, there he goes. He's out of the way. If I want to get rid of this annoying device now that I have got him stunned, I can destroy it. That will stop it from continually zapping me and draining my power. I don't need it anymore. It can go away. There's the next epic to avoid. Once you go through that doorway, there is also a stationary mob to the left through this doorway. As long as you're not running full tilt through this door, you're fine. So go straight forward into the middle of this pathway here. Take a 90 degree turn. Follow behind him so you don't get hit by the mobs to the left and to the right. Once he is far enough past him, them so that you can duck around, you will go up to the side of the ramp. You do not want to run up the ramp yet because of this mob. I'll just edge up a bit, go to the side, then you will wait for him to path up and down the ramp. Once he is back down the ramp, you can go up the ramp and get your next update from Mildrath the Marvelous, who has moved to this area. You are also approaching your next revive point, and that will be very handy for you in case you do get smished in the, the next little bit. You won't have to run through this part again. This is if you don't leave the zone, if you don't evac, etc., 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 you are done with this part of the instance. Run up, talk to Meldrath. If you want this lovely lore, I recommend you read it yourself. The short version is he's sending you on deeper. You need to go to the control room next. Do not go left or right yet. First off, move slowly. You might have just noticed a stutter there. I do not understand the TikTok language. So when I run up to these levers for the first time and that language pops up on my screen, I get lag. I have lag died at this point from being in motion when I mouse over those levers. 
It's only the first time when you approach the levers in the zone that there is that slight lag. So now I have the lag out of the way. It knows I don't know the language. It'll leave me alone. I look to the east. I look to the west. Both of them have warnings about these old leaking steam pipes. If I run through them the way they are right now, I die. I don't want to die. I like going east first because that's the way I'm used to it. I'm a creature of habit after this many tests. So I flip the east purge lever. I watch it purge and purge and pretty graphics. The moment that green message comes up saying it's been purged, I run through quickly. In a little while, there will be a message saying that that lever has reset. It has not reset yet, but I, you don't want to go running back through it yet. There is a purge lever on this side too to get back through from east to center. So you can do it from both directions. Now, since I am on the east side of the zone and I am going north from here, all of the mobs that are going to be aggro for this next little bit are going to be in nooks to the left. Again, I'm heading north from the east side, so they will be on the left. If I was on the west side going north, they would be to the right. In other words, they're on the inside of that big box on your map. So if you see a nook to the inside, it may have aggro. So you want to hug the opposite wall whenever possible. So I'm hugging right, ignored that standing mob, hugging right again because there's a mob to the left. Hi, mob. Going through the door, going to the end, making note of this bot that I is sitting that I cannot target. I will need it later. Now, sometimes there's a hero an epic through this doorway, sometimes there isn't. Here he comes. I don't want to keep dealing with him. Now, you'll note I placed the device in the doorway. It is kind of annoying at this point because it, centering it in the doorway means it's hard for me to get past. However, I can then just get rid of the device. He will stay stunned. I have to come through this hallway several times. That's the only reason I'm getting rid of him. You can perfectly avoid him. You can follow behind him, yada, yada, yada. I'm a redhead. I'm on steroids. I'm getting rid of him just to save me some anger. There will be a mob to my left once I get to this next little nook. So I'm hugging right still. And I'm headed to this door, running up the pathway, opening the next door, bada boom, bada bing. I'm in the control center. Meldrath location number three. Talk to Meldrath, learn all the details about the security code to get into that center room, which is where I need to be. I don't need the rest of this. I just need that center room. I just can't get to it. I need a cycling security code. The thing that will get me the cycling security code is this hackbot. Unfortunately, the hackbot needs repairs. Of course! Once I get that hackbot repaired, then I will use these six control consoles, three to either side of the door, and I will input the code. But I have to get the code. In order to get the code, I need to get the parts. So, off to get parts. Parts is parts is parts. I'm going to get the one to the east first because the, there are two on the western side and one of them is right next to the crafting equipment that I will use. So, now I'm going through a new doorway that I had not been through. There will be that epic over there pathing through that walkway area, easily avoidable. Heroic to the left, heroic up the ramp to the right, Again, avoidable. This is one I don't like to avoid, however, through this door, which is where I need for one of the parts. So, placing the device through the doorway. Yes, that works. It pulses a bit, then it gives me the message that it's active. And then that error, error, error message was 
that epic being very close to the door and getting zapped. As you can see, it's a short pathway. And not only do I need this thing to the left, but later on I will need to get something up this way as well through this room. So having him down is good. I can either leave the EMD up or I can take it down and it will still be stunned when I come through. For now, I'm just leaving it. Back up, the epic isn't nearby. So I run to here, I flip the purge level, blah, 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 blah. Boom, ready, to the middle, stop. <laughs> yes, there have been times where I tried to go straight through and forgot that the Western side was on a separate lever. So zap, instant death. There is no avoiding this, if you go through when it's not purged, you're dead. Plain and simple. I am down to seven on the EMDs. I'm still doing well. And I did it again. Almost got myself smished. This is an even shorter pathway. And you really can't avoid him. You really do want to stun him. It's just too much bother. Otherwise, I almost got myself smished. This is one of my common deaths because I get to thinking ahead of what I need to do and what I need to grab and I kind of forget about him. Uh, and he's down, almost on top of the other piece that I need. There we go, I've got the circuitry. And I went awfully close to where something was parked and I missed it, good. Through a new doorway Another totally avoidable pathing epic. You can see him over there. I paratroop down. I know another sitting bot that I will deal with later. I go up the ramp, around the corner, grab the gear. I will be crafting in a moment. I will be crafting three items. First thing to note though, that anvil is my crafting equipment. That epic, not a worry. He will not get me while I'm standing here behind this equipment. So I have all the time I need to do the crafting. Since this is three combines, this is probably a good point to use a progress potion if you have enough to spare. And you will need, between these three, 100 golden ember, 100 gnarled entwood, 100 plume wit hide, 100 storm stock, 100 ethereum, and 20 five celestial filament and 50 celestial coal. I will be back as soon as I am done with this crafting. All right, the crafting is complete and I am headed back to the control room once again, as long as I don't run into that epic. I will head back using the west side so you can see more of the pathing there. That also means I don't have to cross that steam again. I'm hugging left because there will sometimes be mobs to the right. You will notice another sitting bot along the way. You will notice this bot on the corner here. You will need to turn this corner very sharply and carefully so that you do not aggro him. That's one of the reasons I don't like the west side as much because I tend to run at high speed and then suddenly go, whoops, I should have slowed down there. Back to the control room, run over to the little hack bot, right click to install each piece. Once all three pieces are done, you get the ability for the hack bot. It will also go onto your hot bar if you've got a free spot. If not, go find it in your knowledge book summon him. He has to be out in order for you to get the codes. If you die, you will need to resummon him. Since I have this epic knocked out, I can go through a little faster. Code 1. You will notice that he is binary control bot XXXII. Remember your Roman numerals? That's 32. You will need to know the Arabic versions of those Roman numerals once we get through these six updates. 
the next one we are going for, you can either use another EMD or you can parkour. I'm going to play with jumping on crates, even though my coordination is not too great, as you can see when I'm distracted and talking. I will get up on these crates. I will get stunned a little bit by the EMD that's still up. But there we go. Control bot 2 says false. I do not have to remember these. The bot will do it for me. Now I'm going through this doorway. I'm getting annoyed with that though, so I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going into this little side room. You can see it easier on the big map. I don't want to cut it too closely because there is a bot over there hiding to the left past the trash heap. I'm going diagonally across the room. Control bot one says true. I no longer need this side of the zone at all. I have three of my six codes. The other three will be to the west. Epic is not yet here. I can go through. Purge east side. Run through to the center. Purge west side. Wait, there we go, run through. Jump down on top of the head of that one that tells me true for number eight. I have six EMDs. I don't want to fuss. I only need five of them, so there we go. I'm dropping one there. EMD is now active. Open the door from a distance. It does take a moment sometimes, but it has been knocked out. I am going to the far northwest corner, as you can see on the map. And he's more off to the side here this time. Bot 4 says true. One bot left to go. Unless I do something utterly stupid, this is a death-free death run. And yes, I am perfectly capable of doing something very stupid from being distracted and talking. It is rather hard with Vibro <laughs> to walk and talk at the same time. As Various visiting siblings have learned you'd also do not want me talking and driving at the same time, but that's another story. <laughs> All right, final bot is number 16. It also says true. Cut this corner sharply. Okay, I am through all aggro that I ever need to approach in this zone. Now, I will tell you what these places are. This first one will be 32. The next one will be 16, then 8, then 4, then 2, then 1. If you forget this, they also show up when you examine. So I'm going to check status on the handy dandy bot. And I am going to, since I am all the way over here, I'm going to start from this direction and go leftwards. Control bot one is true. True means on, that is off. So you turn the true ones clockwise. Zap, there you go, it's on. The next one that is true will be four. This one is four, turn clockwise. The next one is eight. It is also true, turn clockwise. In fact, they're all true except for number two back there. So turn on, turn on, wait for the message. Door is opened in the distance. Well, it's not much of a distance. Since I've stunned 
the epic that goes through this way, I don't have to worry. I can go straight in and stop. You do not want to go into the red wall. That center area is instant death. So you come over near this first little yellow sparkly. You don't even need the sparkly. Just place an EMD somewhere in that area. Place it, run on to the next. It zaps. It has something to disable. Ignore the thump. That's just a cat knocking something off a windowsill trying to get my attention. I will play with her shortly. Spoiled little thing. So I am using my five EMDs at these five pillars. I am breaking down that force field. There we go. Now we come to the fireworks. As the four, fifth one gets knocked out. Once they're all out, there you go. No more force field. Take a moment to ooh and awe ah at this pretty thing. I really do want it as a house item. They've heard us say that more than once. Maybe they will, maybe they won't, but that's a malfunctioning time portal. Meldrath the Malignant, as opposed to Meldrath the Magnificent, who is the ghost that we deal with, put this together and now it's damaged. So all of this whole thing that we're going to be doing for the next several quests is to find the plans, find the parts needed, and then craft to disable it. So I'm grabbing the plans, I'm turning around, and a portal opens up so that I can go straight to Valor. I will then go talk to Drusel Row. She will send me over to Varig Row, who we haven't run into before, but, well, he's like the crafter of the gods. I mean, even more than anything we've ever seen before, but he doesn't usually deal with humans, so we'll get to deal with him. I should say he doesn't deal normally with mortals. So this is going to be a big thing for us that we're actually going to deal with the Forge Master himself. And you will get to see him as you go through the quest line. That concludes this quest walkthrough. I will be back in a bit for the next step. If I can convince this thing to stop. It decided that it wanted.